the country life by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by pamela nagami sweet country life to such unknown whose lives are others not their own but serving courts and cities be less happy less enjoying thee thou never ploughst the ocean's foam to seek and bring rough pepper home nor to the eastern indust rove to bring from thence the scorched clove nor with the loss of thy loved rest bring'st home the ingot from the west no thy ambitious masterpiece flies no thought higher than a fleece or to pay thy hinds and clear all scores and so to end the year but walk'st about thine own dear bounds not envying others larger grounds for well thou knowest tis not the extent of land makes life but sweet content when now the cock the ploughman's horn calls forth the lily-wristed morn then to thy cornfields thou dost go which though well soiled yet thou dost know that the best compost for the lands is the wise master's feet and hands there at the plough thou find'st thy team with a hind whistling there to them and cheerest them up by singing how the kingdom's portion is the plough this done then to the enamelled meads thou goest and as thy foot there treads thou seest a present godlike power imprinted in each herb and flower and smell'st the breath of great-eyed kine sweet as the blossoms of the vine here thou behold'st thy large sleek neat unto the dewlaps up and meet and as thou look'st the wanton steer the heifer cow and ox draw near to make a pleasing pastime there thee seen thou goest to view thy flocks of sheep safe from the wolf and fox and finds their bellies there as full of short sweet grass as backs with wool and leavest them as they feed and fill a shepherd piping on a hill for sports for pageantry and plays thou hast thy eves and holidays on which the young men and maids meet to exercise their dancing feet tripping the comely country round with daffodils and daisies crowned thy wakes thy quintals here thou hast thy maypoles too with garlands graced thy morris dance thy wits and ale thy shearing feast which never fail thy harvest home thy wassail bowl that's tossed up after fox in the hole thy mummeries thy twelve tide kings and queens thy christmas revellings thy nut-brown mirth thy russet wit and no man pays too dear for it to these thou hast thy times to go and trace the hare in the treacherous snow thy witty wiles to draw and get the lark into the trammel net thou hast thy cock root and thy glade to take the precious pheasant maid thy lime twigs snares and pitfalls then to catch the pilfering birds not men o oh, happy life if that their good the husbandmen but understood who all the day themselves do please and younglings with such sports as these and lying down have not to affright sweet sleep that makes more short the night Kytera Desunt. end of poem this recording is in the public domain to phyllis to love and live with him by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england live live with me and thou shalt see the pleasures i'll prepare for thee what sweets the country can afford shall bless thy bed and bless thy board the soft sweet moss shall be thy bed with crawling woodbine overspread by which the silver shedding streams shall gently melt thee into dreams thy clothing next shall be a gown made of the fleeces purest down the tongues of kids shall be thy meat 
their milk thy drink and thou shalt eat the paste of filberts for thy bread with cream of cowslips buttered thy feasting table shall be hills with daisies spread and daffodils where thou shalt sit and red breast by for meat shall give thee melody i'll give thee chains and carcanets primroses and violets a bag and bottle thou shalt have that richly wrought and this as brave so that as either shall express the wearer's no mean shepherdess at shearing times and yearly wakes when themelis his pastime makes there thou shalt be and be the wit nay more the feast and grace of it on holy days with virgins meet to dance the haze with nimble feet thou shalt come forth and then appear the queen of roses for that year and having dance above all the best carry the garland from the rest in wicker baskets made shall bring to thee my dearest shepherdling the blushing apple bashful pear and shamefaced plum all simpering there walk in the groves and thou shalt find the name of phyllis in the rind of every straight and smooth-skinned tree where kissing that i'll twice kiss thee to thee a sheep-hook i will send pranked with ribbons to this end this this alluring hook might be less for to catch a sheep than me thou shalt have possets or sails fine not made of ale but spiced wine to make thy maids and self freed mirth all sitting near the glittering hearth thou shalt have ribbons roses rings gloves garters stockings shoes and strings of winning colours that shall move others to lust but me to love these nay and more thine own shall be if thou wilt love and live with me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wassail by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida give way give way ye gates and win an easy blessing to your bin and basket by our entering in may both with manchet stand replete your larders too so hung with meat yet though a thousand thousand eat yet ere twelve moons shall whirl about their silvery spheres there's none may doubt but more's sent in than was served out next may your dairies prosper so as that your pans no ebb may know but if they do the more to flow like to a solemn sober stream banked all with lilies and the cream of sweetest cowslips filling them then may your plants be pressed with fruit nor bee or hive you have be mute but sweetly sounding like a lute last may your harrows shares and ploughs your stacks your stocks your sweetest mouths all prosper by your virgin vows alas we bless but see none here that brings us either ale or beer in a dry house all things are near let's leave a longer time to wait where rust and cobwebs bind the gate and all live here with needy fate where chimneys do for ever weep for want of warmth and stomachs keep with noise the servants eyes from sleep it is in vain to sing or stay our free feet here but will away yet to the lairs this will say the time will come when you'll be sad and reckon this for fortune bad to have lost the good ye might have had end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Fairies by Robert Herrick, read for LibriVox.org by phone. If ye will with Mab find grace, set each platter in his place, rake the fire up and get water in, ere sun be set. Wash your pails and cleanse your dairies, sluts are loathsome to the fairies. Sweep your house, who doth not so, Mab will pinch her by the toe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ceremony Upon Candle Moss Eve by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Down with the rosemary and so, down with the bays and mistletoe down with the holly ivy all wherewith ye dressed the christmas hall that so the superstitious find no one least branch there left behind for look how many leaves there be neglected there maids trust to me so many goblins you shall see end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Ceremonies for Candlemas Eve and The Ceremonies for Candlemas Day by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida The Ceremonies for Candlemas Eve Down with the rosemary and bays, down with the mistletoe, instead of holly, now upraise the greener box for show the holly hitherto did sway let box now domineer till the dancing easter day or easter's eve appear then youthful box which now hath grace your houses to renew grown old surrender must his place unto the crisped you when you is out then birch comes in and many flowers beside both of a fresh and fragrant kin to honor whitsuntide green rushes then and sweetest bents with cooler oaken boughs come in for comely ornaments to re-adorn the house thus times do shift each thing his turn does hold new things succeed as former things grow old the ceremonies for candlemas day Kindle the Christmas brand, and then, till sunset, let it burn, which quenched, then lay it up again, till Christmas next return. Part must be kept, wherewith to teend, the Christmas log next year, and where it is safely kept, the fiend can do no mischief there. End of Poems This recording is in the public domain. Farewell Frost, or Welcome Spring, by Robert Herrick, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Fled are the frosts, and now the fields appear, reclothed in fresh and verdant diaper. Thawed are the snows, and now the lusty spring gives to each mead a neat enameling the palms put forth their gems and every tree now swaggers in her leafy gallantry the while the dalian minstrel sweetly sings with warbling notes her tyrant sufferings what gentle winds perspire as if here never had been the northern plunderer to strip the trees and fields to their distress leaving them to a pitied nakedness and look how when a frantic storm doth tear a stubborn oak or holm long growing there but lulled to calmness then succeeds a breeze 
that scarcely stirs the nodding leaves of trees so when this war which tempest like doth spoil our salt our corn our honey wine and oil falls to a temper and doth mildly cast his inconsiderate frenzy off at last the gentle dove may when these turmoils cease bring in her bill once more the branch of peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the maids to walk abroad by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england come sit we under yonder tree where merry as the maids will be and as on primroses we sit we'll venture if we can at wit if not at jaw gloves we will play to spend some minutes of the day or else spin out the thread of sounds playing at questions and commands or tell what strange tricks love can do by quickly making one of two thus we will sit and talk but tell no cruel truths of philomel or phyllis whom hard fate forced on to kill herself for demophon but fables will relate how jove put on all shapes to get her love as now a satire then a swan a bull but then and now a man next we will act how young men woo and sigh and kiss as lovers do and talk of brides and who shall make that wedding smock this bridal cake that dress this sprig that leaf this vine that smooth and silken columbine this done will draw lots who shall buy and gild the bays and rosemary what poses for our wedding rings what gloves will give and ribbonings and smiling at ourselves decree who then the joining priest shall be what short sweet prayers shall be said and how the posset shall be made with cream of lilies not of kine and maidens blush for spiced wine thus having talked will next commend a kiss to each and so will end end of poem this recording is in the public domain Karina's going amain by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england get up get up for shame the blooming morn upon her wings presents the god unshorn see how aurora throws her fair fresh quilted colours through the air get up sweet slugger bed and see the dew bespangling herb and tree each flower has wept and bowed toward the east above an hour since yet you not dressed nay not so much as out of bed when all the birds of matins said and sung their thankful hymns tis sin nay profanation to keep in when as a thousand virgins on this day spring sooner than the lark to fetch in may rise and put on your foliage and be seen to come forth like the springtime fresh and green and sweet as flora take no care for jewels for your gown or hair fear not the leaves will strew gems in abundance upon you besides the childhood of the day has kept against you come some orient pearls unwept come and receive them while the light hangs on the dewlocks of the night and tighten 
on the eastern hill retires himself or else stand still till you come forth wash dress be brief in praying few beads are best when once we go a-maying come my carina come and coming mark how each field turns a street each street a park made green and trimmed with trees see how devotion gives each house a bow or branch each porch each door ere this an ark a tabernacle is made up of white thorn neatly interwove as if here were those cooler shades of love can such delights be in the street and open fields and we not see it come will abroad and let's obey the proclamation made for may and sin no more as we have done by staying but my carina come let's go a maying there's not a budding boy or girl this day but is got up and gone to bring in may a deal of youth ere this is come back and with white thorn laden home some have dispatched their cakes and cream before that we have left to dream and some have wept and wooed and plighted troth and chose their priest ere we can cast off sloth may a green gown have been given many a kiss both odd and even many a glance too has been sent from out the eye love's firmament many a jest told of the keys betraying this night and locks picked yet we're not amaying come let us go while we are in our prime and take the harmless folly of the time we shall grow old apace and die before we know our liberty our life is short and our days run as fast away as does the sun and as a vapour or a drop of rain once lost can ne'er be found again so when or you or i are made a fable song or fleeting shade all love or liking all delight lies drowned with us in endless night then while time serves and we are but decaying come my carina come let's go a maying end of poem this recording is in the public domain the maypole by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the maypole is up now give me the cup i'll drink to the garlands around it but first unto those whose hands did compose the glory of flowers that crowned it a health to my girls whose husbands may earls or lords be granting my wishes and when that ye wed to the bridal bed then multiply all like two fishes End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wake by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Come, Anthea, let us too go to feast as others do. Tarts and custards, creams and cakes are the junkets still at wakes unto which the tribes resort where the business is the sport morris dancers though shall see marion too in pageantry and a mimic to devise many grinning properties players there will be and those base in action as in clothes yet with strutting they will please the incurious villages near the dying of the day there will be a cudgel play where a coxcomb will be broke ere a good word can be spoke 
but the anger ends all here drenched in ale or drowned in beer happy rucksticks best content with the cheapest merriment and possess no other fear than to want the wake next year end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hawk cart or harvest home by robert herrick read for LibriVox dot org by elaine conway england to the right honourable e mildmay earl of westmoreland come sons of summer by whose toil we are the lords of wine and oil by those tough labours and rough hands we rip up first then reap our lands crowned with the ears of corn now come and to the pipe sing harvest home come forth my lord and see the cart dressed up with all the country art see here a mawkin there a sheet as spotless pure as it is sweet the horses mares and frisking fillies clad all in linen white as lilies the harvest swains and wenches bound for joy to see the hock cart crowned about the cart here how the rout of rural younglings praise the shout pressing before some coming after those with a shout and these with laughter some bless the cart some kiss the sheaves some prank them up with oaken leaves some cross the fill horse some with great devotion stroke the home-born wheat while other rustics less attend to prayers than to merriment run after with their breeches rent well on brave boys to your lord's hearth glittering with fire where for your mirth ye shall see first the large and chief foundation of your feast fat beef with upper stories mutton veal and bacon which makes full the meal with several dishes standing by as here a custard there a pie and here all tempting frumenti and for to make the merry cheer if smirking wine be wanting here there's that which drowns all care stout beer which freely drink to your lord's health then to the plough the commonwealth next to your flails your fanes your vats then to the maids with wheaten hats to the rough sickle and crooked scythe drink frolic boys till all be blithe feed and grow fat and as ye eat be mindful that the labouring neat as you may have their fill of meat and know besides ye must revoke the patient ox unto the yoke and all go back unto the plough and harrow though they'll hanged up now and you must know your lord's words true feed him ye must whose food fills you and that this pleasure is like rain not sent ye for to drown your pain but for to make it spring again end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bride cake by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by vaughn this day my julia thou must make for mistress bride the wedding cake knead but the dough and it will be to paste of almost turned by thee or kiss it thou but once or twice and for the bride cake there'll be spice end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old wife's prayer by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by phone holy rudd come forth and shield us in the city and the field safely guard us now and a from the blast that burns by day and those sounds that us affright in the dead of dampish night drive all hurtful fiends as fro 
by the time the crook's first crow end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bellman by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by phone from noise of scare fires rest ye free from murders benedicity from all mischances that may fright your pleasing slumbers in the night mercy secure ye all and keep the goblin from ye while ye sleep past one o'clock and almost two my masters all good day to you end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the genius of his house by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by phone command the roof great genius and from thence into this house pour down thy influence that through each room a golden pipe may run of living water by thy benison fulfil the larders and with strengthening bread be evermore these bins replenished next like a bishop consecrate my ground that lucky fairies here may dance their round and after that lay down some silver pence the master's charge and care to recompense charm then the chambers make the beds for ease more than for peevish pining sicknesses fix the foundation fast and let the roof grow old with time but yet keep weather proof end of poem this recording is in the public domain his grange or private wealth by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by phone though clock to tell how night draws hence i've none a cock i have to sing how day draws on i have a mate my prue by good luck sent to save that little fates gave me or lent a hen i keep which creaking day by day tells when she goes her long white egg to lay a goose i have which with a jealous ear lets loose her tongue to tell what danger's near a lamb i keep tame with my morsels fed whose dam an orphan left him lately dead a cat i keep that plays about my house grown fat with eating many a miking mouse to these a tracy i do keep whereby i please the more my rural privacy which are but toys to give my heart some ease where care none is slight things do lightly please end of poem this recording is in the public domain a pastoral upon the birth of prince charles by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england a pastoral upon the birth of prince charles presented to the king and set by mr nick lanier the speakers myrtillo amintas and amaryllis amin good day myrtillo mert and to you no less and all fair signs lead on our shepherdess amar with all white luck to you mert but say what news stirs in our sheep walk amin none save that my ewes my weathers lambs and wanton kids are well smooth fair and fat none better i can tell or that this day menalcas keeps a feast for his sheep shearers but true these are the least but dear amintas and sweet amaryllis rest but a while here by this bank of lilies and lend a gentle ear to one report the country has amin from whence amar from whence mert the court three days before the shutting in of may with whitest wool be ever crowned that day to all our joy a sweet-faced child was born more tender than the childhood of the morn chorus pan piped to him and bleats of lambs and sheep let lullaby the pretty prince asleep mert and that his birth should be more singular at noon of day was seen a silver star 
bright as the wise men's torch which guided them to god's sweet babe when born at bethlehem while golden angels some have told to me sang out his birth with heavenly minstrelsy amen oh rare but isn't a trespass if we three should wend along his baby ship to see mert not so not so call but if it chance to prove at most a fault tis but a fault of love amar but dear mertillo i have heard it told those learned men brought incense myrrh and gold from countries afar with store of spices sweet and laid them down for offerings at his feet mert tis true indeed and each of us will bring unto our smiling and our blooming king a neat though not so great an offering amar a garland for my gift shall be a flowers ne'er sucked by the thieving bee and all most sweet yet all less sweet than he amen and i will bear along with you leaves dropping down the honeyed dew with oaten pipes as sweet as new mert and i sheep hook will bestow to have his little kingship know as he is prince his shepherd too call come let's away and quickly let's be dressed and quickly give the swiftest grace his best and when before him we have laid our treasures we'll bless the babe then back to country pleasures end of poem this recording is in the public domain a dialogue betwixt himself and mistress eliza wheeler by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england a dialogue betwixt himself and mistress eliza wheeler under the name of amaryllis my dearest love since thou wilt go and leave me here behind thee love or pity let me know place where i may find thee amaryll in country meadows pearled with dew and set about with lilies there filling morns with cowslips you may find your amaryllis her what have the meads to do with thee or with thy youthful hours live thou at court where thou mayst be the queen of men not flowers let country wenches make em fine with poses since tis fitter for thee with riches gems to shine and like the stars to glitter amaryll you set too high a rate upon a shepherdess so homely her believe it dearest there's not one i the court that's half so comely i prithee stay amaryll i must away let's kiss first then we'll sever ambo and though we bid adieu to-day we shall not part for ever End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A bucolic betwixt two, Lacon and Theasis, by Robert Herrick, read for LibriVox.org, by Elaine Conway, England. Lacon, for a kiss or two, confess what doth cause this pensiveness thou most lovely neat herdess why so lonely on the hill why thy pipe by thee so still that erewhile was heard so shrill tell me do thy kine now fail to fulfil the milking pail say what is't that thou dost ail theasis none of these but out alas a mischance is come to pass and i'll tell thee what it is see mine eyes are weeping ripe lacon tell and i'll lay down my pipe theasis i have lost my lovely steer that to me was far more dear than these kine which i milk here broad of forehead large of eye party coloured like a pie smooth in each limb as a die clear of hoof and clear of horn 
sharply pointed as a thorn with a neck by yoke and worn from the which hung down by strings balls of cowslips daisy rings interplaced with ribbonings faultless every way for shape not a straw could him escape ever gamesome as an ape but yet harmless as a sheep pardon lacon if i weep tears will spring where woes are deep now ay me ay me last night came a mad dog and did bite ay and killed my dear delight lacon alack for grief Theasis, but i'll be brief hence i must for time doth call me and my sad playmates all to his evening funeral live long lacon so adieu lacon mournful maid farewell to you earth afford ye flowers to strew end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Pastoral Sung to the King by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England Montano, Silvio, and Mertillo, Shepherds Mon, bad are the times, Sill, and worse than they are, we Mon, troth, bad are both, worse fruit, and ill the tree, the feast of shepherds fail sill none crowns the cup of wassail now all sets the quintel up and he who used to lead the country round youthful mirtillo here he comes grief drowned ambo let's cheer him up sill behold him weeping ripe mirt ah amaryllis farewell mirth and pipe since thou art gone no more i mean to play to these smooth lawns my mirthful roundelay dear amaryllis mon hark sill mark mirt this earth grew sweet where amaryllis thou didst set thy feet ambo poor pitied youth mirt and hear the breath of kine and sheep grew more sweet by that breath of thine this stock of wool and this rich lock of hair this ball of cowslips these she gave me here sill words sweet as love itself mon hark mirt this way she came and this way too she went how each thing smells divinely redolent like to a field of beans when newly blown or like a meadow being lately mown mon a sweet sad passion mirt in dewy mornings when she came this way sweet bents would bow to give my love the day and when at night she folded had her sheep daisies would shut and closing sigh and weep besides ay me since she went hence to dwell the voice's daughter ne'er spake syllable but she is gone till matillo tell us whither mirt where she and i shall never meet together mon forfend it pan and pales do thou please to give an end mirt to what sill such griefs as these mirt never oh never still i may endure the wound i suffer never find a cure mon love for thy sake will bring her to these hills and dales again mirt no i will languish still and all the while my part shall be to weep and with my sighs call home my bleating sheep and in the rind of every comely tree i'll carve thy name and in that name kiss thee mon set with the sun thy woes sill the day grows old and time it is our full-fled flocks to fold call the shades grow great but greater grows our sorrow but let's go steep our eyes in sleep and meet to weep to-morrow end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. To the Willow Tree by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Thou art to all lost love the best, The only true plant found, Where with young men and maids distressed, And left of love, are crowned. When once the lover's rose is dead, Or laid aside forlorn, then willow garlands bout the head bedewed with tears are worn when with neglect the lover's bane poor maids rewarded be for their love lost their only gain is but a wreath from thee and underneath thy cooling shade when weary of the light the love spent youth and love sick maid come to weep out the night end of poem this recording is in the public domain the fairy temple or oberon's chapel by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england dedicated to mr john merrifield Counselor at law. Rare temples thou hast seen, I know, and rich for in and outward show. Survey this chapel built alone, without all lime or wood or stone. Then say if one thou'st seen more fine than this, the fairies once now thine. The temple away enchased with glass and beads there is that to the chapel leads whose structure for his holy rest is here the halcyon's curious nest into the which who looks shall see his temple of idolatry where he of godheads has such store as rome's pantheon had not more his house of rimen this he calls girt with small bones instead of walls first in a niche more black than jet his idle cricket there is set then in a polished oval by there stands his idle beetle fly next in an arch akin to this his idle canker seated is then in a round is placed by these his golden god cantharides so that where'er ye look ye see no capital no cornice free or freeze from this fine frippery now this the fairies would have known theirs is a mixed religion and some have heard the owls it call part pagan part papistical if unto me all tongues were granted i would not speak the saints here painted saint tit saint nit saint is saint it is who gainst mab's state placed here right is saint willow the wisp of no great bigness but alias called here fatus ignis saint frip saint trip saint phil saint philly neither those other saintships will i here go about for to recite their number almost infinite which one by one here set down are in this most curious calendar first at the entrance of the gate a little puppet priest doth wait who speaks to all the comers there favour your tongues who enter here pure hands bring hither without stain a second pules hence hence profane hard by i the shell of half a nut the holy water there is put a little brush of squirrel's hairs composed of odd not even pears stands in the platter or close by to purge the fairy family near to the altar stands the priest there offering up the holy priest ducking in mood and perfect 
tense with much good do it him reverence the altar is not here for square nor in a form triangular nor made of glass or wood or stone but of a little transverse bone which boys and buckled children call playing for points and pins cock all whose linen drapery is a thin subtile and ductile codling skin which o'er the board is smoothly spread with little seal-work damasked the fringe that circumbines it too is spangle-work of trembling dew which gently gleaming makes a show like frost-work glittering on the snow upon this fetuous board doth stand something for shewbread and at hand just in the middle of the altar upon an end the fairy psalter graced with the trout fly's curious wings which serve for watch it ribbonings now we must know the owls are led right by the rubric which they read and if report of them be true they have their text for what they do a and their book of canons too and as sir thomas parson tells they have their book of articles and if that very night not lies they have their book of homilies and other scriptures that design a short but righteous discipline the basin stands the board upon to take the free oblation a little pin dust which they hold more precious than we prize our gold which charity they give to many poor of the parish if there's any upon the ends of these neat rails hatched with the silver light of snails the owls in formal manner fix two pure and holy candlesticks in either which a tall small bent burns for the altar's ornament for sanctity they have to these their curious copes and surplices of cleanest cobweb hanging by in their religious vestry they have their ash-pans and their brooms to purge the chapel and the rooms their many mumbling mass priests here and many a dapper chorister then ushering vergers here likewise their canons and their chaunteries or cloister monks they have enow ay and their abbey lubbers too and if their legend do not lie they much affect the papacy and since the last is dead there's hope of boniface shall next be pope they have their cups and chalices their pardons and indulgences their beads of knits bowels books and wax candles forsooth and other knacks their holy oil their fasting spittle their sacred salt here not a little dry chips old shoes rags grease and bones beside their fumigations many a trifle too and drink it and for what use scarce man would think it next then upon the chanter's side an apple's core is hung up dried with rattling kernels which is rung to call to morn and even song the saint to which the most he prays and offers incense nights and days the lady of the lobster is whose foot pace he doth stroke and kiss and humbly chives of saffron brings for his most cheerful offerings when after these he's paid his vows he lowly to the altar bows and then he dons the silkworm shed like a turk's turban on his head and reverently departeth thence hid in a cloud of frankincense and by the glow-worm's light well guided goes to the feast that's now provided end of poem this recording is in the public domain oberon's feast by robert herrick read for liberfox dot org by lane conway england shabcott to the fairy state 
I with discretion dedicate, because thou prizest things that are curious and unfamiliar. Take first the feast, these dishes gone, we'll see the fairy court, anon, a little mushroom table spread. After short prayers they set on bread, a moon-parched grain of purest wheat, with some small glittering grit to eat. His choice bits with, then in a trice, they make a feast less great than nice. But all this while his eye is served, we must not think his ear was stirred, but that there was in place to stir his spleen, the chirring grasshopper, the merry cricket, pulling fly, the piping gnat, for minstrelsy. And now we must imagine first the owl's present to quench his thirst, a pure seed pearl of infant dew bought and besweetened in a blue and pregnant violet which done his kitling eyes begin to run quite through the table where he spies the horns of papery butterflies of which he eats and tastes a little or of that we call the cuckoo's spittle a little fuzzball pudding stands by yet not blessed by his hands that was too coarse but then forthwith he ventures boldly on the pith of sugared rush and eats the sack and well bestrutted bee's sweet bag gladding his palate with some store of emmet's eggs what would he more but beards of mice and youth stewed thigh a bloated earwig and a fly with the red-capped worm that's shut within the concave of a nut brown as his tooth a little moth late flattened in a piece of cloth with withered cherries mandrake's ears moles his eyes to these the slain stag's tears the unctuous dewlaps of a snail the broke heart of a nightingale o'ercome come in music with a wine ne'er ravished from the flattering vine but gently pressed from the soft side of the most sweet and dainty bride brought in a dainty daisy which he fully quaffs up to bewitch his blood to height this done commended grace by his priest the feast is ended end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Beggar to Mob, the Fairy Queen by Robert Herrick, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Please, Your Grace, from out your store, give an alms to one that's poor, that your mickle may have more. Black I'm grown for want of meat, give me then an ant to eat or the cleft ear of a mouse over soured in drink of souse or sweet lady reach to me the abdomen of a bee or commend a cricket's hip or his huxen to my script give for bread a little bit of a piece that gins to chit and all my full thanks take for it flower of fuzzballs that's too good for a man in needy hood but the meal of mill dust can well content a craving man any orts the elves refuse well will serve the beggar's use but if this may seem too much for an alms then give me such little bits that nestle there in the prisoner's pannier so a blessing light upon you and mighty oberon that your plenty lasts till when i return your alms again end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hag 
by Robert Herrick, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The hag is astride, this night for to ride, the devil and she together, through thick and through thin, now out and then in, though ne'er so foul be the weather. A thorn or a burr, she takes for a spur with a lash of a bramble she rides now through brakes and through briars or ditches and mires she follows the spirit that guides now no beast for his food dares now range the wood but hushed in his lair he lies lurking while mischiefs by these on land and on seas at noon of night are a-working the storm will arise and trouble the skies this night and more for the wonder the ghost from the tomb affrighted shall come called out by the clap of the thunder end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Mad Maid's Song by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Good morrow to the day so fair, good morning, sir, to you. Good morrow to mine own torn hair, bedabbled with the dew. Good morning to this primrose too, good morrow to each maid that will with flowers the tomb bestrew wherein my love is laid ah woe is me woe woe is me alack and well a day for pity sir find out that bee which bore my love away i'll seek him in your bonnet brave i'll seek him in your eyes nay now i think they've made his grave i the bed of strawberries i'll seek him there i know ere this the cold cold earth doth shake him but i will go or send a kiss by you sir to awake him pray hurt him not though he be dead he knows well who do love him and who with green turfs rear his head and who do rudely move him he soft and tender pray take heed with bands of cowslips bind him and bring him home but tis decreed that i shall never find him end of poem this recording is in the public domain the cheat of cupid or the ungentle guest by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c one silent night of late when every creature rested came one unto my gate and knocking me molested who's that said i beats there and troubles thus the sleepy cast off said he all fear and let not locks thus keep ye for i a boy am who by moonless nights have swerved and all with showers wet through and end with cold half starved i pitiful arose and soon a taper lighted and did myself disclose unto the lad benighted i saw he had a bow and wings too which did shiver and looking down below i spied he had a quiver i to my chimney shine brought him as love professes and chafed his hands with mine and dried his dropping tresses but when he felt him warmed let's try this bow of ours and string if they be harmed said he with these late showers 
Forthwith his bow he bent, And wedded string and arrow, And struck me, that it went Quite through my heart and marrow. Then laughing loud he flew Away, and thus said flying, Adieu, mine host, adieu, I'll leave thy heart a dying. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Upon Cupid by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Ray Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Love, like a gypsy, lately came and did me much importune to see my hand that by the same he might foretell my fortune. He saw my palm and then said he, I tell thee by this score here that thou within few months shalt be the youthful prince de armor here i smiled and bade him once more prove and by some cross line show it that i could ne'er be prince of love though here the princely poet end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Be Merry by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Let's now take our time While we're in our prime And old, old age is afar off For the evil, evil days Will come on apace Before we can be aware of End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Upon His Gray Hairs by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Fly me not, though I be gray. Lady, this I know you'll say. Better look the roses red when with white commingled black your hairs are mine are white this begets the more delight when things meet most opposite as in pictures we descry venus standing falcon by end of poem this recording is in the public domain a hymn to the muses by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c honor to you who sit near to the well of wit and drink your fill of it glory and worship be to you sweet maids thrice three who still inspire me and teach me how to sing unto the lyric string my measures ravishing then while i sing your praise my priesthood crowned with bays green to the end of days end of poem this recording is in the public domain the coming of good luck by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org. By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. So good luck came, and on my roof did light, like noiseless snow, or as the dew of night. Not all at once, but gently, as the trees are by the sunbeams, tickled by degrees end of poem this recording is in the public domain his content in the country by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida here here i live with what my board can with the smallest cost afford 
though ne'er so mean the viands be they will contend my prue and me or pea or bean or wart or beet whatever comes content makes sweet here we rejoice because no rent we pay for our poor tenement wherein we rest and never fear the landlord or the usurer the quarter day does ne'er affright our peaceful slumbers in the night we eat our own and batten more because we feed on no man's score but pity those whose flanks grow great swelled with the lard of others meat we bless our fortunes when we see our own beloved privacy and like our living where we're known to very few or else to none end of poem this recording is in the public domain his return to london by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida from the dull confines of the drooping west to see the day spring from the pregnant east ravished in spirit i come nay more i fly to thee blest place of my nativity thus thus with hallowed foot i touch the ground with thousand blessings by thy fortune crowned o fruitful genius that bestowest here an everlasting plenty year by year o place o people manners framed to please all nations customs kindreds languages i am a free-born roman suffer then that i amongst you live a citizen london my home is though by hard fate sent into a long and irksome banishment yet since called back henceforth let me be o native country repossessed by thee for rather than i'll to the west return i'll beg of thee first here to have mine urn weak i am grown and must in short time fall give thou my sacred relics burial end of poem this recording is in the public domain his desire by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c give me a man that is not dull when all the world with rifts is full but unamazed dares clearly sing when as the roofs are tottering and though it falls continues still tickling the cittern with his quill end of poem this recording is in the public domain an ode for ben johnson by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida ah ben say how or when shall we thy guests meet at those lyric feasts made at the sun the dog the triple ton where we such clusters had and made us nobly wild not mad yet each verse of thine outdid the meat outdid the frolic wine my ben or come again or send to us thy wit's great overplus but teach us yet wisely to husband it lest we that talent spend and having once brought to an end that precious stock the store of such a wit the world should have no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain to live merrily and to trust to good verses by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida 
Now is the time for mirth, nor cheek or tongue be dumb, for with the flowery earth the golden pomp is come. The golden pomp is come, for now each tree does wear, made of her pap and gum, rich beads of amber here. Now reigns the rose, and now the Arabian dew besmears my uncontrolled brow and my retorted hairs. Homer, this health to thee, in sack of such a kind, that it would make thee see, though thou wert ne'er so blind. Next Virgil I'll call forth to pledge this second health, in wine whose each cup's worth an Indian commonwealth. A goblet next I'll drink, to Ovid and suppose, made he the pledge he'd think, the world had all one knows. Then this immensive cup of aromatic wine, Cotylus I quaff up to that terse muse of thine. Wild I am now with heat, O Bacchus, cool thy rays, or frantic I shall eat thy thirsty and bite the bays. Round, round the roof does run, and being ravished thus, come, I will drink a ton to my Propertius. Now to Tibullus next, this flood I drink to thee. But stay, I see a text that this presents to me. Behold, Tibullus lies, here burnt, whose small return of ashes scarce suffice to fill a little urn. Trust to good verses, then, they only will aspire, when pyramids as men are lost in a funeral fire, and when all bodies meet in lethe to be drowned, then only numbers sweet with endless life are crowned. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The apparition of his mistress calling him to Elysium by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England. Descent Nonula. Come then, and like two doves with silvery wings, let our souls fly to the shades, wherever springs sit smiling in the meads, where balm and oil, roses and cassia, crown the untilled soil, where no disease reigns or infection comes to blast the air but ambergris and gums. This, that, and every thicket doth transpire more sweet than storax from the hallowed fire where every tree a wealthy issue bears of fragrant apples blushing plums or pears and all the shrubs with sparkling spangles shew like morning sunshine tinsling the dew here in green meadows sits eternal may purfling the margents well perpetual day so double gilds the air as that no night can ever rust the enamel of the light here naked younglings handsome striplings run their goals for virgin's kisses which when done then unto dancing forth the learned round commixed they meet with endless roses crowned and here we'll sit on primrose banks and see love's chorus led by cupid and will he two loving followers two unto the grove where poets sing the stories of our love there thou shalt hear divine musia sing of hero and leander then i'll bring thee to the stand where honoured homer reads his odysseys and his high iliads about whose throne the crowd of poets throng to hear the incantation of his tongue to linus then to pindar and that done i'll bring thee herrick to anacreon 
quaffing his full crowned bowls of burning wine and in his raptures speaking lines of thine like to his subject and as his frantic looks shew him truly bacchanalian like besmeared with grapes welcome he shall thee thither where both may rage both drink and dance together then stately virgil witty ovid by whom fair corina sits and doth comply with ivory wrists his laureate head and steeps his eyes in dew of kisses while he sleeps then soft catullus sharp fanged marshal and towering lucan horace juvenal and snaky perseus these and those whom rage dropped for the jars of heaven filled to engage all times unto their frenzies thou shalt there behold them in a spacious theatre among which glories crowned with the sacred bays and flattering ivy to recite their plays Beaumont and fletcher swans to whom all ears listen while they like sirens in their spheres sing their evadne and sing more for thee there yet remains to know than thou canst see for glimmering of a fancy do but come and there i'll shew thee that capacious room in which thy father johnson now is placed as in a globe of radiant fire and grace to be in that orb crowned that doth include those prophets of the former magnitude and he one chief but hark i hear the cock the bowman of the night proclaim the clock of late struck one and now i see the prime of day break from the pregnant east tis time i vanish more i had to say but night determines here away end of poem this recording is in the public domain the invitation by robert herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. To sup with thee thou didst me home invite, And mad'st the promise that mine appetite Should meet and tire on such lautitious meat, The like not Heliogobulus did eat, And richer wine wouldst give to me thy guest Than Roman Scylla poured out at his feast i came tis true and looked for fowl of price the bastard phoenix bird of paradise and for no less than aromatic wine of maiden's blush commixed with jasmine clean was the hearth the mantle larded jet which wanting lar and smoke hung weeping wet at last in the noon of winter did appear a ragged souse neat's foot with sick vinegar and in a burnished flagonet stood by beer small as comfort dead as charity at which amazed and pondering on the food how cold it was and how it chilled my blood i cursed the master and i damned the souse and swore i'd get the og of the house well when to eat thou dost me next desire i'll bring a fever since thou keep'st no fire End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Sir Clip Spee Crew by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Since to the country first I came, I have lost my former flame and methinks i not inherit as i did my ravished spirit if i write a verse or two tis with very much ado in regard i want that wine which should conjure up a line yet though now of muse bereft i have still the manners left for to thank you noble sir for those gifts you do confer upon him who only can be in prose a grateful man end of poem this recording is in the public domain
A Country Life to His Brother, Mr. Thomas Herrick by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Thrice and above, blessed my soul's half art thou, In thy both last and better vow, Couldst leave the city for exchange to see the country's sweet simplicity and it to know and practice with intent to grow the sooner innocent by studying to know virtue and to aim more at her nature than her name the last is but the least the first doth tell ways less to live than to live well and both are known to thee who now canst live led by thy conscience to give justice to soon please nature and to show wisdom and she together go and keep one centre this with that conspires to teach man to confine desires and know that riches have their proper stint in the contented mind not mint and canst instruct that those who have the itch of craving more are never rich these things thou know'st to the height and dost prevent that plague because thou art content with that heaven gave thee with a weary hand more blessed in thy brass than land to keep cheap nature even and upright to cool not cocker appetite thus thou canst tersely live to satisfy the belly chiefly not the eye keeping the barking stomach wisely quiet less with a neat than needful diet but that which most makes sweet thy country life is the fruition of a wife whom stars consenting with thy fate thou hast got not so beautiful as chaste but whose warm side thou dost securely sleep while love the sentinel doth keep with those deeds done by day which ne'er affright thy silken slumbers in the night nor has the darkness power to usher in fear to those sheets that know no sin the damasked meadows and the pebbly streams sweeten and make soft your dreams the purling springs groves birds and well-weaved bowers with fields enameled with flowers present their shapes while fantasy discloses millions of lilies mixed with roses then dream ye hear the lamb by many a bleat who to come suck the milky teat while phanus in the vision comes to keep from ravening wolves the fleecy sheep with thousands such enchanting dreams that meet to make sleep not so sound as sweet Recall these figures so thy rest endear, as not to rise, my chanticleer warns the last watch, but with the dawn dost rise to work, but first to sacrifice, making thy peace with heaven for some late fault, with holy meal and spiriting salt, which done thy painful thumb, this sentence tells us, Jove for our labor all things sells us nor are thy daily and devout affairs attended with those desperate cares the industrious merchant has who for to find gold runneth to the western ind and back again tortured with fears doth fly untaught to suffer poverty but thou at home blessed with securest ease sitst and beliefs that there be seas and watery dangers while thy wither hap but sees these things within thy map and viewing them with a more safe survey makes easy fear unto thee say a heart thrice walled with oak and brass that man had first durst plough the ocean but thou at home without or tide or gale canst in thy map securely sail seeing those painted countries and so guess by those fine shades their substances 
and from thy compass taking small advice buy us travel at the lowest price nor are thine ears so deaf but thou canst hear far more with wonder than with fear fame tell of states of countries courts and kings and believe there be such things when of these truths thy happier knowledge lies more in thine ears than in thine eyes and when thou hear'st by that too true report vice rules the most or all at court the pious wishes are though thou not there virtue had and moved her sphere but thou livest fearless and thy face ne'er shows fortune when she comes or goes but with thy equal thoughts prepared dost stand to take her by the either hand nor carst which comes the first the foul or fair a wise man every way lies square and like a surly oak with storms perplexed grow still the stronger strongly vexed be so bold spirit stand centre like unmoved and be not only thought but proved to be what i report thee and inure thyself if want comes to endure and so thou dost for thy desires are confined to live with private lar nor curious whether appetite be fed or with the first or second bread who keeps no proud mouth for delicious cates hunger makes coarse meats delicates canst and unurged forsake that larded fare which art not nature makes so rare to taste boiled nettles colworts beets and eat these and sour herbs as dainty meat while soft opinion makes thy genius say content makes all ambrosia nor is it that thou keepest the stricter size so much for want as exercise to numb the sense of dearth which should sin haste it thou mightst but only seat not taste it yet can thy humble roof maintain a choir of singing crickets by thy fire and the brisk mouse may feast herself with crumbs till that green-eyed kitling comes then to her cabin lest she can escape the sudden danger of a rape and thus thy little well-kept stock doth prove wealth cannot make a life but love nor art thou so close-handed but canst spend counsel concurring with the end as well as spare still conning o'er this theme to shun the first and last extreme ordaining that thy small stock find no breach or to exceed thy tether's reach but to live round and close and wisely true to thine own self and known to few thus let thy rural sanctuary be elysium to thy wife and thee there to disport yourselves with golden measure for seldom use commends the pleasure live and live blest thrice happy pair let breath but lost to one be the other's death and as there is one love one faith one troth be so one death one grave to both till when in such assurance live ye may nor fear or wish your dying day end of poem this recording is in the public domain to his peculiar friend mr john wicks by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c since shed or cottage i have none i sing the more that thou hast won to whose glad threshold and free door i may a poet come though poor and eat with thee a savory bit paying but common thanks for it yet should i chance my wicks to see an over leaven look in thee to sour the bread and turn the beer to an exalted vinegar or shouldst thou prize me as a dish 
of thrice boiled warts or third day's fish i'd rather hungry go and come than to thy house be burdensome yet in my depth of grief i'd be one that should drop his beads for thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain a poenatical or advisive first to his friend mr john wicks by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by elaine conway england is this a life to break thy sleep to rise as soon as day doth peep to tire thy patient ox or ass by noon and let thy good days pass not knowing this that jove decrees some mirth to dulcy man's miseries no tis a life to have thine oil without extortion from thy soil thy faithful fields to yield thee grain although with some yet little pain to have thy mind and nuptial bed with fears and cares uncumbered a pleasing wife that by thy side lies softly panting like a bride this is to live and to endear those minutes time has lent us here then while fate suffer live thou free as is that air that circles thee and crown thy temples too and let thy servant not thy own self sweat to strut thy barns with sheaves of wheat time steals away like to a stream and we glide hence away with them no sound recalls the hours once fled or roses being withered nor us my friend when we are lost like to a dew or melted frost then live we mirthful while we should and turn the iron age to gold let's feast and frolic sing and play and thus less last than live our day whose life with care is overcast that man's not said to live but last nor is't a life seven years to tell but four to live that half seven well and that will do as men who know some few sons spent we hence must go both to be blended in the urn from whence there's never a return end of poem this recording is in the public domain to his honoured and most ingenious friend mr charles cotton by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. For brave comportment, wit without offense, words fully flowing, yet of influence. Thou art that man of men, the man alone, worthy the public admiration, who with thine own eyes readst what we do write, and givest our numbers upony and weight tellest when a verse springs high how understood to be or not born of the royal blood what state above what symmetry below lines have or should have thou the best can show for which my charles it is my pride to be not so much known as to be loved of thee long may i live so and my wreath of bays be less another's laurel than thy praise end of poem this recording is in the public domain a new year's gift sent to sir simeon steward by robert herrick read for LibriVox .org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida 
no news of navies burnt at seas no noise of late spawned titteries no closet plot or open vent that frights men with a parliament no new device or late found trick to read by the stars the kingdom sick no gin to catch the state or ring the free-born nostril of the king we send to you but here a jolly verse crowned with ivy and with holly that tells of winter's tales and mirth that milkmaids make about the hearth of christmas sports the wassail bowl that tossed up after a fox in the hole of blind man's buff and of the care the young men have to shoe the mare of twelve tied cakes of peas and beans wherewith ye make those merry scenes when as ye choose your king and queen and cry out hey for our town green of ash heaps in which ye use husbands and wives by streaks to choose of crackling laurel which for sounds a plenteous harvest to your grounds of these and such like things for shift we send instead of new year's gift read then and when your faces shine with buxom meat and capering wine remember us in cups full crowned and let our city health go round quite through the young maids and the men to the ninth number if not ten until the fired chestnuts leap for joy to see the fruits ye reap for the plump chalice and the cup attempts till it be tossed up and as ye sit about your embers call not to mind those fled decembers but think on these that are to appear as daughters to the instant year sit crowned with rosebuds and carouse till libra pater twirls the house about your ears and lay upon the year your cares that's fled and gone and let the russet swains the plough and harrow hang up resting now and to the bagpipe all address till sleep takes place of weariness and thus throughout with christmas plays frolic the full twelve holy days end of poem this recording is in the public domain an ode to sir clips be cool by robert herrick led for LibriVox.org by naya g here we securely live and eat the cream of meat and keep eternal fires by which we sit and do divine as wine and rage inspires if full we charm then call upon anacreon to gaze the frantic curse and having drunk we raise a shout throughout to praise his worth then cause we horace to be read with sung or said a goblet to the brim of lake wine both swelled and crowned around we quaff to him thus thus we live and spend the hours in wine and flowers and make the frolic year the month the week the instant day to stay the longer here come then brave knight and see the cells wherein i dwell and my enchantments too which love and noble freedom is and this shall fetter you take horse and come or be so kind to send your mind though but in numbers few and i shall think i have the heart or part of clips we crew end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Panegyric to Sir Lewis Pemberton by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England Till I shall come again, let this suffice I send my salt, my sacrifice to thee, thy lady, younglings And as far as to thy genius and thy la to the worn threshold porch hall parlour kitchen the fat fed smoking temple which in the wholesome savour of thy mighty chines invites to supper him who dines where laden spits 
warped with large ribs of beef not represent but give relief to the lank stranger and the sour swain where both may feed and come again for no black-bearded vigil from thy door beats with a buttoned staff the poor but from thy warm love hatching gates each may take friendly morsels and ne'er stay to sun his thin-clad members if he likes for thou no porter keep'st who strikes no comer to thy roof his guest right wants or staying there is scourged with taunts of some rough groom who yerked with corn says sir you've dipped too long e the vinegar and with our broth and bread and bits sir friend you've fared well pray make an end two days you've larded here a third you know makes guests and fish smell strong pray go you to some other chimney and there take essay of other giblets make merry at another's hearth you're here welcome as thunder to our beer manners knows distance and a man unrued would soon recoil and not intrude his stomach to a second meal no no thy house well fed and taught can show no such crabbed wizard thou hast learnt thy train with heart and hand to entertain and by the arms full with a breast unhid as the old race of mankind did when either's heart and either's hand did strive to be the nearer relative thou dost redeem those times and what was lost of ancient honesty may boast it keeps a growth in thee and so will run a course in thy fame's pledge thy son thus like a roman tribune thou thy gate early sets ope to feast and late keeping no currish waiter to affright with blasting eye the appetite which fain would waste upon thy cates but that the trencher creature marketh what best a more suppling piece he cuts and by some private pinch tells dangers nigh a hand too desperate or a knife that bites skin deep into the pork or lights upon some part of kid as if mistook when checked by the butler's look no no thy bread thy wine thy jocund beer is not reserved for trebius here but all who at thy table seated are find equal freedom equal fare and thou like to that hospitable god jove joyest when guests make their abode to eat thy bullocks thighs thy veals thy fat weathers and never grudged at the pheasant partridge got wit reeve ruff rail the cock the curlew and the quail these and thy choicest viands do extend their tastes unto the lower end thy glad table not a dish more known to thee than unto any one but as thy meat so thy immortal wine makes the smirk face of each to shine and spring fresh rose buds while the salt the wit flows from the wine and graces it while reverence waiting at the bashful board honours my lady and my lord no scurril jest no open scene is laid here for to make the face afraid but temperate mirth dealt forth and so discreet lie that it makes the meat more sweet and adds perfumes unto the wine which thou dost rather pour forth than allow by cruse and measure thus devoting wine as the canary isles were thine but with that wisdom and that method as no one that's there his guilty glass drinks of distemper or has cause to cry 
repentance to his liberty no thou knowest orders ethics and hast read all o economics knowest to lead a house dance neatly and canst truly show how far a figure ought to go forward or backward sideward and what pace can give and what retract a grace what gesture courtship comeliness agrees with those thy primitive decrees to give subsistence to thy house and proof what genii support thy roof goodness and greatness not the oaken piles for these and marbles have their wiles to last but not there ever virtue's hand it is which builds gainst fate to stand such is thy house whose firm foundations trust is more in thee than in her dust or depth these last may yield and yearly shrink when what is strongly built no chink or yawning rupture can the same devour but fixed it stands by her own power and well laid bottom on the iron and rock which tries and counterstands the shock and ram of time and by vexation grows the stronger virtue dies when foes are wanting to her exercise but great and large she spreads by dust and sweat safe stand thy walls and thee and so both will since neither's height was raised by dill of others since no stud no stone no piece was reared up by the poor man's fleece no widow's tenement was racked to gild or fret thy ceiling or to build a sweating closet to anoint the silk soft skin or bathe in ass's milk no orphan's pittance left him served to set the pillars up of lasting jet for which their cries might beat against thine ears or in the damp jet read their tears no flank from hallowed altar does appeal to yond star chamber or does seal a curse to thee or thine but all things even make for thy peace and pace to heaven go on directly so as just men may a thousand times more swear than say this is that princely pemberton who can teach men to keep a god in man and when wise poets shall search out to see good men they find them all in thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain all things decay and die by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by stephan all things decay with time the forest sees the growth and downfall of her aged trees that timber tall which threescore lustres stood the proud dictator of the state-like wood i mean the sovereign of all plants the oak droops dies and falls without the cleaver stroke end of poem this recording is in the public domain To His Dying Brother, Master William Herrick By Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Life of my life, take not so soon thy flight, But stay the time till we have bade good night. Thou hast both wind and tide with thee, thy way as soon dispatched is by the night as day let us not then so rudely henceforth go till we have wept kissed sighed 
shook hands or so there's pain in parting and a kind of hell when once true lovers take their last farewell what shall we too our endless leaves take here without a sad look or a solemn tear he knows not love that hath not this truth proved love is most loth to leave the thing beloved pay we our vows and go yet when we part then even then i will bequeath my heart into thy loving hands for i'll keep none to warm my breast when thou my pulse art gone no here i'll last and walk a harmless shade about this urn wherein thy dust is laid to guard it so as nothing here shall be heavy to hurt those sacred seeds of thee End of poem this recording is in the public domain